Hi hey everyone and welcome. What we have here in front of me is um, a bin that I have a bunch of finished castings in. And um, earlier on I had been covering it in the normal way with um, just some paper and cardboard. But now um, what I've opted for is something you might have seen before if you've watched my channel in the past is covering up the bin with another bin basically to sort of create what I refer to as a terrarium effect. And the main reason for that was to try to uh, try to keep the moisture that could possibly be evaporating out of the bin in the bin. Because if you remember originally, I had set this bin aside for the purposes of allowing it to air out. Because initially when I harvested all these castings about 34, 35 days ago, to me, the material just seemed a bit too damp, and I had um, set it aside into this container just to give it a chance to uh, dry off and evaporate. And every time I've gone through this bin over the past few weeks, I've always found it to continue to improve and improve. And most recently, I felt like the material was in pretty good shape already as far as the moisture level. So I thought that by um, covering it this way, the top surface could actually regain some of the moisture that it had lost. The top surface had started getting a bit overly dry. And, um, you know, at that point, if you ever handled compost, if it becomes overly dry, it becomes rather tough and hard. So I didn't want that to happen. So this is really becoming pretty nice stuff. You know, you take one of these um, little chunks and it crumbles quite readily and its moisture level seems pretty good at this point. So uh, that was kind of what I was after. I, I felt like the material had dried out adequately enough to um, suit my liking. So I didn't think any additional drying of the material was required. So in addition to drying the material, I was also attempting to do something else in this bin, which was to, um, as long as it was just gonna be sitting here in this bin anyway, it was, uh, it was an idea that one of my viewers had given me, which was to try um, rounding up any worms that might have made their way into this container as part of the harvesting of the material and uh, try to you know to, to capture them and to return them to my worm colony you know otherwise they would just remain with the compost and would eventually just end up out in the garden so um, you know I followed that person's recommendation and we've been checking in on this bin regularly to see how the baiting of the worms is progressing so the um, the first few check-ins of this bin were at six day intervals so I had created this little bait box if you will to try to lure worms out of the compost and into the bait box and I had always used savory delicious materials such as um, melon to try to convince the worms to make their way over into here and each each time we checked in, we always seemed to find worms. Um, but it always seemed like the number of worms would continue to diminish and become less and less each time we checked in. And it was kind of bringing me to the conclusion that perhaps we'd actually succeeded in you know, baiting all the worms out of this material. Um, but this last go around, I decided I'm gonna let this sit a little bit longer since the um, since the last time I checked in, it just seemed like fewer and fewer worms were gathering, but I was still anticipating that there might still be um, worm cocoons, worm eggs hatching, and baby worms needing to find themselves some, you know, moisture and nourishment and grit, all of which have been, you know, placed conveniently here into the center of the bin inside of this bait box. So um, this time, this go around, I decided I was going to wait a little longer. So now it's been 12 days since we last checked in on this thing. So uh, we're going to take another look at how things are progressing in here just to see if we're actually starting to see some baby worms. And that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Um, and it doesn't seem to me like the level has dropped much. So I don't know if, you know, if we've gathered many, if any, worms. But we'll see. Let's, um, let's lift this out of here. And usually I'll first look under and around the feeding zone. Because oftentimes the worms are actually hanging around, you know, nearby if they haven't made their way directly into the container yet. And I don't see 
any evidence of such a thing here so far at least. So the key on this container, you can see there's openings here and here only on two of the sides. So um, it would be you know either on this side or this side that we might see some evidence of something. Every now and then I do see something moving and like here for example I see something moving but you know what that is? It's a millipede. The last time I poked my head into here I just took a peek in here a few days ago had a couple minutes to spare and I found a millipede hanging out so it does seem like we've got other composters that inhabit our worm bins hanging out in here which is fine. So I don't have any objection to a millipede hanging out inside my worm bin but um neither on this side or on this side the two sizes that were ex exposed to the um, the slots in the in the bin bait box I don't see any worm activity or any presence of worms and that would normally be the place to see them what's this here I thought I had it it looked to me Again, I'm not sure if this is a millipede. I believe it is, just based on the way it moves. It doesn't have that squirming type of uh, propulsion. It has that kind of straightforward movement like a, like a millipede would. Makes me wonder if that was just the same millipede I had captured previously. <laughs> um, so that's all I'm really seeing in here so far. So the other thing that I wanted to follow up with now is to actually see how things are happening inside of this box here. So um, what, I'll normally, what I'll normally do is uh, grab, a, grab a box like this and just dump out the contents to see how things are progressing. So let's bring the camera a little bit closer to see what we can see in here. not just popping out on its own. It needs to be helped out. I believe I do see one worm so far. And it's an adult sized worm. Pretty good sized worm. And now, um, and that's right where we would expect them to be, right between the layers of a piece of cardboard. I had placed some cardboard in here as bedding and that was another idea that came from a, a viewer, so thank you for that idea. Um, the whole idea being that they might be attracted to the food, but without any bedding in the container, they might not really have much reason to stay once they feel like they're fed. So the bedding was an idea that was meant to keep the, bin, uh, keep the worms within the bait box after they've come in for a little snack. So, so far I'm seeing one, two, three worms hanging out in here. And I see a little bit of the remaining food here, but not much. It's hard to imagine that three little worms might have eaten that much melon, but it's possible, I suppose. Unless, of course, there's other worms that I've not yet stumbled on. One, two, three. I'm actually kind of peeling into the... Um, the cardboard to see if I find more worms in the layers in between the cardboard but it's not terribly important I am um, I am mostly interested in trying to see if I could spot any tiny baby worms because that was the main reason for wanting to continue this experiment a little longer was because um, you know if there were worm cocoons that had been laid into this castings material immediately before the harvesting of the material had occurred then it would take you know something in the order of um, 32 35 days I believe um, is that right or am I mistaken is it 24 days I always forget um, I think it's really 24 something in the neighborhood of three weeks three to four weeks for a worm egg to eventually hatch and for the worms to emerge so um since it's been about 35 days now since this uh since this 
since this bin of castings has been laid out here to dry, I, uh, I assume that after, you know, 20, 25 days, we'd start seeing baby worms emerge from any cocoons that may have been in here. But so far, I really can't say I see much, if any. So, um, it doesn't mean that's not going to happen. It's still that possibility. So, I am going to continue to let this run. Um, but in terms of overall time frames, um, from the time that I had originally harvested the two bins that this material came from, plus the additional time that's been sitting, all the material's been sitting in this bin, um, if I'm not mistaken, we're now at the same number of days of my very oldest bin ever. So my very oldest bin ever was 199 days. And um, I believe that this bin had been, uh, the material that's in this bin came out of two different uh, composting tubs. The um, Those two bins had been run for maybe 160 three or 164 days and I believe it's been another 34 days since the material's been in this tub something like that and I believe that breaks down to 199 days from start to finish so that actually matches exactly the same number of days of my very oldest bins that I ever had and in those cases I had actually um, rounded up the worms by horizontally migrating them within those tubs and then just harvesting the material so um, in that same amount of time, I would have to say that this material has been um, far greatly um, uh, depleted of worm population than when I had set up the horizontal migration and just harvested the castings in that case. So it does seem like maybe a pref preferred way to do it this way, or at least to me, if your main interest it is truck you know, if your main interest is in trying to um, make the material worm free and keeping all the worms in your population and then having com compost that's really been depopulated of the worms. So uh, I just figured I'd throw that in there for, you know, just a little qu quick comparison of the 199 day old bin that got harvested, I don't know, maybe back in August or something like that. Uh, compared to this material, which you know technically is now also 199 days from the day it was originally launched off as a fresh bin. And the main difference between the two being that this material is almost completely worm-free at this point. That is, unless baby worms start hatching out of it. And, you know, compared to that other batch of material, um, I believe that that batch of compost had quite a number of worms remaining in it when it was harvested. So... Just a little uh, aside, uh, since these are pretty much at the same age at this point. So, um, all right, so all I'm really gonna do now is just put things back. I don't know if I really wanna add more food to this. You know, maybe I should. I'm gonna go grab just a couple chunks of food that we can add to this, maybe a little bit more bedding, just so we can keep this uh, bait box in service for a little while longer in the hopes that maybe we do start to attract some baby worms if uh, if the if if there are in fact cocoons in this material that are yet to um, emerge with baby worms then it'll be kind of cool to see some baby worms starting to show up in this bait box so let me just grab some of the materials we're going to need to rebuild these and we'll get to get to work on that okay so now what i've gotten is some carrot peels and um you know, not, not exactly the same stuff we've been using in the past. In the past, we've been using mostly fruit, which is melon. Um, but, you know, carrot peels are also quite appealing to the... Uh, peels are appealing, right? To the worms, because this also has a fairly high um, sugar content to it. So, um, this is what we're going to be adding in. So, let's just set that down for a quick second. Just so we can... Um, Grab the box, and um, and I guess we're going to just begin by first placing a little bit of bedding material down in the bottom, just a little bit of uh, shredded paper instead of cardboard this time. And um, in addition to that, we're going to first, I guess I'm going to plop in the existing stuff first. But you know, other 
other times I've always extracted this entire wad of bedding and food and worms that had been um, gathered together. But since all we're talking about here is, you know, three or four worms, I figured I'm just going to leave it all be and keep it in here as is and just drop it right down in into here like so. Um, and then I'm going to just use another layer of uh, paper as bedding so that the frozen stuff doesn't go right on top of the that wad of material that the worms are occupying right now and kind of shock them. I wouldn't want to do that. So I'm going to place all of this fresh food that they're getting right here on top of this bedding. And um, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it goes good. Um, I guess we can just pour this in. The last few bits of carrot. And um, we're just going to put it right back down where it, where it was. The, uh, the hole, I believe, um, the hole is pretty, pretty good. Pretty good depth, I believe. Um, the one thing I'm not sure of, though, is I thought I had always been placing a piece of paper, a piece of folded up, um, a piece of folded up filter paper underneath the container. But maybe last time I just omitted it or overlooked putting it back in there. But that's fine. I don't think we really need it. It's not really serving much of a purpose. The idea was that it would just be a little bit neater and cleaner. So I think the, the openings were oriented this way last time. This time I'm just noticing that I had put it in this way. And I don't think it makes much difference, but we'll try it this way. Maybe maybe it does make a difference, and we'll see how that goes. So I'll just gently um, backfill the edges of our reloaded bait box. And try to fill it up all the way up to the top here, around the edges. And we're just going to let it keep going a little bit longer, you know. Really not much of a rush to uh, to make use of this material quite yet. And um, I am definitely interested in seeing if, um, if we do eventually start seeing some baby worms showing up, you know. Who knows, maybe they're still out there. Maybe they've been emerging from cocoons. Maybe they're occupying the material and they're just so small that I'm not seeing them. And maybe it's just a little bit of time that they need to make their way into the bait box. So I'm... Mostly I'm um, continuing this experiment because I'm curious, curious to see uh, what what becomes of it. So we'll, we'll see, you know, if we, if we really see nothing new happening uh, over time, then we might just call it quits. But for now, we're just going to keep letting this run and, um, and we'll see what happens. All right, everyone. Well, that's pretty much where we stand with this thing. I'll... Uh, I'll just get this thing covered up again as we had it before. Once again, I'm going to cover up with this uh, this other container to try to create this terrarium effect so that the, uh, the surface has a little bit more of a moisture content to it. So if worms do make it to the surface, they're not thrown off by a very dry surface. And then maybe that would just be the easiest way for them to make their way to the bait box as well. So that was kind of my other thinking in terms of why to do a do it with this terrarium style setup so um yeah that's pretty much it for now let's keep our fingers crossed and we'll see what happens so uh yeah thanks for watching everyone i appreciate your company and uh you know as always if you enjoyed the video then please remember to give it a thumbs up i always really appreciate that and also consider uh, you know, coming to subscribe and becoming a part of the family and you know join the community and uh also ring the bell if you ring the bell then you know, you'll get informed by YouTube, hopefully, that new video is online, and then you can come check it out when it's new. All right, everyone, thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye now.